In the shadows of other dimensions, there lies a nefarious force waging war upon humans from the space between spaces for millennia. A dark force that governs not just our thoughts and actions, but our very souls. The very advent of time began the slave-master hierarchy between us and those unseen forces behind our every action and thought. They built and created rules and systems of thought, created kingdoms and spawned religions used to rule the masses from afar by controlling the ebb and flow of space and time on an epic level. Under the guise of free will and individualism, the systems in place around us actually ensures that we have no choice but to comply and obey an underlying agenda that, at its core, is evil. Put in place by beings that feed and are nurtured by the control they maintain over planet Earth. Outside of the realms of our own imagination and our own reality, there is a sinister, unseen race of beings controlling our every move. From the moment we are born on this planet we call Earth, we are under the yoke of an invisible, superior race. Occasionally mankind has had visions of them and sensed their presence. We have given names to these fleeting transcendental blips in the reality of human consciousness. Angels, demons, ghosts, fairies, elves, aliens, reptilians, men in black, and now dark, all-powerful secret societies. From the earliest texts we have proof that mankind was concerned with the presence, invasion and control of our own species by extraterrestrial beings. But these are not necessarily beings from another planet, but from another dimension. There is a science behind their existence, and the secret lies within the waveform. Over the millennia, these beings have stepped in and out of what we call reality and manipulated our lives. They have control of all our governing institutions, from sovereigns to senate, from commerce to church. They have fed us a series of lies and we have gorged upon them. It's time to stop the feeding frenzy and to change our diet to one of truth, to expose the hidden agenda that poisons our minds, to take back our lives. You may believe there is a grand conspiracy in the world to control mankind, created by secret human groups. You may believe that aliens are dealing with our governments, or that there is even a great hidden war afoot between mankind and extraterrestrial life. You may be awaiting a great disclosure of the truth, 
a day when our leaders come clean. The truth is that our governments and even those secret societies are as much in the dark as you or I. The truth is that hidden from our conscious lives there is a darkness from another realm that forces us into a life of repetitive cycles and keeps us locked away. If you choose to open your mind and consider a different reality, then you may yet be free, at least in spirit. This is the story of how mankind has, for thousands of years, been subjugated, oppressed and controlled by beings from another realm. <coughs> Are you ready to escape prison planet Earth? The first thing we have to do is to overcome the immediate sense of how strange and bizarre the whole thing of an ancient, controlling and hidden race of beings can sound. Our ordinary lives are so full of facts and figures that we perceive as reality. It's this temperature, it's this time, we live in this country, we are human, we own a dog or cat, we go to work, we come home, we get married, we have children. We work hard, enjoy our lives, and then we die. As sociable creatures, we are always interested in the lives of others, and so we watch, learn, interact. We even spend thousands of hours of our lives watching soap operas and films of fictional people. But we know that these are just actors, don't we? Psychologists have proven that all humans lie there are just different levels of lying. So what can we really trust? Are the stories we listen to from friends and family any more real than those on the TV? Billions of people listen to others talk about God, spirits, ghosts and more. Billions of dollars are spent on these stories because of belief. This is belief in the words of another human who we know is more than capable of lying. Hitler once said that if you repeat a lie often enough, eventually the people will believe it. He was right. Thousands of years of spouting the same lies has created massive populations of the globe that now believe in a deity. And yet, if we actually take a look at the very first texts from all religions, we actually discover that our ancestors were talking about beings that came from another place, another dimension. They reveal that beings descended, often with craft. They then took control of humanity, formed the first civilizations, taught us how to grow crops, science, languages and more. They placed superhuman watchers over us, to keep us in our place. We, in return, worshipped them and turned them into our gods. The stories tell us how they had superhuman powers. They could fly, 
and changed shape. They had incredible weapons of light, chariots that flew through the sky, and they lived for very long periods of time. Why is it that we modern, scientific, practical humans believe in a so-called loving and jealous God? Because that is what they wanted us to believe. But the truth is that these ancient aliens, beings of light that are in fact our prison guards, and we are under their yoke. Archaeology and history reveal that the times before these beings arrived, humans lived a peaceful existence. We lived off the land, we ate berries and root crops, we followed the herds and were in tune with nature and its rhythms. Then, suddenly, we find broken bones, burnings and other signs of warfare. What changed? The beings arrived and a divided mankind fought back. An ancient civil war across the world between those who followed the invaders and those who wanted freedom. It was the beginning of a new way for humanity a new method of imprisonment. Religion was created for us to follow the lies. And what does religion do? It makes special super beings. The legendary histories tell us quite clearly that these invaders mated with chosen humans and created a special breed. This new breed became our kings and queens, and were themselves worshipped as gods. From Egypt to Mesopotamia, from Europe to the Far East, all kings were gods on earth. These kings were given authority to rule by the creation of religion, which backed their claim to divine authority. The only real authority these alien hybrids had was the superior power over mankind. The ability to beat, control and manipulate our minds into submission. And now, thousands of years later, we are still under the spell. One unique element we see in historical text and art is the ability of these special beings to shapeshift. Many texts even tell of how abhorrent they were to look upon. Snake-like reptilian elements are at the forefront of descriptions. Today, many call them reptiloids, saurians, or even draconians. It is nothing new. In fact, it has been known for a very long time. The earliest forms of worship are all serpentine. In every country across the globe, in every single religion, in every myth, no matter how separated by time, the worship of the serpent is of paramount importance. Even in the Bible, the serpent that tempts Adam and Eve is a wise and knowledgeable serpent that speaks using its own voice. It is basically the story of how the serpent took control of the earliest humans, driving them towards a so-called civilised existence, controlled by religion. <coughs> using human nature against itself, and yet History also tells us that we often rebelled against the machine. The 
fact that mankind actually did battle against them is clear from the myths seen all over the world, such as the casting out of serpents from Ireland and Malta, the stories of George slaying the dragon and the Archangel Michael fighting the beast are just two. They were given titles over time by mankind. Elohim, Shining Ones, Watchers. Titles of those who held strict control over civilization. Much of this myth of the Watchers is found to be within the tales of wars and mergings of people across the Middle East between Canaanites, Egyptians, Sumerians and even Asian civilizations. But the underlying current is a belief in the Shining Ones as leaders, with Watchers doing their bidding, evolving eventually into our myths of God with his angelic beings. The terms Anunnaki, Anakin and even Nephilim mean those who came down to earth from heaven. Heaven is not something in the sky, it is another place, somewhere special that humans cannot go to while in our physical form. The only way we could actually go to heaven, we are told, was in death, which is simply to live and serve out our time under the bidding of the masters, or to go into an altered state of consciousness. This in itself is very revealing, that we do not actually need a craft to visit the other realm and from where these beings came, but instead we need to see differently to alter our perception. What we see as reality, the physical world around us, may indeed, as many scientists are theorising, be a lie. These ancient beings looked down on the people below and watched, something that would sound very familiar to thousands of people around the world today who have experienced alien visitations. These experiences are altered states of consciousness. They are seeing reality differently. Just like an animal sees a different part of the light spectrum to us, so by altering our own perceptions, we can view a different realm, the realm of the watchers. The truth of the story of the Shining Ones and their watchers has been the subject of a purging by many Jewish authorities who were understandably concerned that the myths of these angels and their worship would distract people from the worship of one God. To this end, the Book of Enoch and the Book of Jubilees were stricken from the accepted list and are now known as Apocrypha. What we do know, though, is that these watchers continued in what has been described as the underground stream and were called egregores. They bred with humanity and melted away. Very soon, massive secret societies emerged that fostered the original teachings of the Shining Ones. Today, these secret societies, controlled by this hybrid race, are in complete control of the world. Derived from the Greek word egrioros, it means watcher or guardian. The office of a watcher is to protect from outside pressures a region or ethnic group assigned to its care. The region is always measured off from another posing a threat of some sort. A given group of persons is tied to a certain area of jurisdiction. Here, 
we meet the riddle of the founding of cities and states. What is more, both the ancient Romans and quite clearly the Chinese have recognised the existence of guardian spirits set over cities. Indeed, one author reports as follows on the occult war waged on enemy cities by ancient Rome. The Romans, when besieging a city, made a habit of carefully inquiring the name of the city and of its guardian spirit. When they knew these, they would summon the guardian spirit of the city and its inhabitants and conquer it. The battles between men are all part of a bigger control of mankind and are preordained by the Watchers. Egregor is Greek and means to rouse from sleep, to be excited by passion, to be awake or to watch. Incredibly, etymologically linked to the enlightenment experience of the awakening or the place between awake and asleep. It is this very place between awake and asleep that the vast majority of alien abductions occur. It is this part of our mind, this midpoint, that we suddenly become aware of reality, of the beings all around us, controlling us. This is the moment many awake and become strange to the rest of society, because they have seen. Eliphas Levi, a 19th century magician and mystic, whose eyes were opened, speaks of these egregores on numerous occasions, and even links them to the giants or watchers spoken of in the Book of Enoch, saying that they take shape and have appeared in the guise of giants. These are the egregores of the Book of Enoch, termed the celestial watchers or egregores by the ancients. Levi also calls these egregores the Anakim, shining ones, men of renown, the giants of the Bible, and that they are expressed in the myths of various cultures, just as we have been finding. It therefore appears that Levi knew of these egregores or watchers, from the recently translated and widely available Book of Enoch. Levi was well known to have Rosicrucian tendencies, and this movement too was aware of the meaning of the word. In fact, they believed that the egregores were still in existence and were working in the background. Amazingly, the infamous book, The Necromicon, tells us about a fabulous city of Irem. Irem of the Pillars is part of Arabian magical lore and was built by the Jinn, or angels, and were also watchtowers, the Towers of the Watchers. The Thesaurus Temporum, translated into Latin in the mid-17th century, gives us a chronology of events surrounding these egregores. They descended, and by 1487 BC, they had taken Enoch to Paradise due to the descent of the Fallen Watchers. A text from the 17th century that quite clearly states that the Watchers descended, remained on Earth, and even took Enoch away again. It seems then that the extremely ancient concept and story of the Shining Ones was still very much alive and being propagated secretly by the mystics of the last few hundred years. These were part and parcel of the hidden secrets.
Today the egregore is seen in occult circles as an energy form, which according to the Martinist order of the Knights of Christ, who claim to be heirs of the Rosicrucians and others, say, its goal is to set the human being free from the hold of the prince of this world, and of achieving the mystical union of the self-aware personality with the individual profundity. Its members strive to have access to mastery by reuniting with the kingdom at the centre, propitious with the descent of the paraclet sent by Christ. In addition to the assistance rendered by the attachment, on the side of the initiator with the egregor, protector of the secret chain. An apostolic succession of power, suggests John Michael Greer in Inside a Magical Lodge, is a basic function of the egregor. Worship me, cries the egregora. I am the Son of God. You are nothing but a worthless and sinful creature, damned from birth and destined to hell, were it not for my sacrifice. And without me, you will never reach heaven. The egregor is a group spirit that serves to remind the initiate of his or her goals. It informs and guides the individual and it protects the living chain of brotherhood. The living chain of brotherhood is entered into when a Sishian performs a rite of their own creation intended to protect and enhance the temple of Set. The egregor protects the brotherhood by letting them know their enemies are there. A symbolic representation of the egregor is used to maintain a link to the Prince of Darkness. Sir Ormsond IV, Saturnian Principle. The message here is quite simple. The Watchers are a spiritual or otherworldly being with power from the gods to control us. They should be worshipped by us. In modern terms, beings from an alternate reality, a different phase of reality, have put themselves above us, created religions for us to join and worship within, and formed highly secretive cabals to foster their control. Failure to follow the command means we will find ourselves in what they call hell. Today we have watchers. Thousands of people have witnessed them. Hundreds come into direct contact with them. There are comic books, games and even movies all about them. We know them as the men in black. Their origin in modern times can be found in the 1940s as UFO sightings were on the increase. People who reported having witnessed the UFO started to be contacted and threatened by sinister men in plain clothes and black suits. Over the years, very few facts have emerged about them. They are thought to work for secretive government departments, and yet they are seen across the world. They have strange superhuman powers. They come and go as they please, appearing and disappearing like ghosts. They are referred to by some as demonic beings. They have strange features and dark skin. They shapeshift.
In fact, there are hundreds of reports of reptilian shapeshifters all over the world. Eyewitnesses have described humans turning into reptilians and back again before their eyes. These reptilians simply take the form of humans to merge into our society. It is all a trick of the waveform, a lie to our eye. Sometimes humans perceive the world a little differently and the true waveform is revealed. Ask anybody who has taken LSD what reality is and they will give you a completely different picture to what they see and what you see. It is not as bizarre as it may sound. It is science at play. Change the colour of your light bulb to red and you will see a completely different room. It will reveal things you did not see before. Strangely, men in black often come with strange sounds and lights, as if the barrier of the manipulated waveform was being broken down. Over the thousands of years between the invasion of these watchers or reptilians, they have not taken power of our governments, religions and secret societies. They created them. They are the powers that rule the world. Their history is the mythology of each and every society and civilization. The stories across the world of serpent gods, dragons and beings of light are the stories of the mass invasion on a worldwide scale. The creation of civilizations everywhere comes hand in hand with the stories of the arrival of beings from another world. Before they came, we were simple peaceful people. Afterwards, we were part of a huge prison on our own planet. It is said that in ancient times we called aliens angels because we did not know what they were. Today it is said we call them aliens because we know better. There is in fact no difference between them. Aliens and angels are the same thing. Angels came, taught us, manipulated us with their words from the gods, and even abducted us. Today, aliens do the same. In fact, just like in ancient times, abductees claimed that they were taken by reptilian-like beings. One of the earliest modern reports is from Nebraska in 1967 of a police officer who claimed he was taken on board a UFO by reptilian humanoids wearing a winged serpent motive. It is claimed by some that aliens would not be humanoid, but they would be if they had, as the ancient texts state, created a hybrid species. The fact is that humans have been abducted for thousands of years, ever since the arrival of the reptilians. There are copious texts reporting these events, and some of the most famous are the actual characters from our religions. Moses, Abraham, Muhammad, Jesus. All of these and more all had close encounters with what we today would call aliens. Even Mary meets the angels of light at the tomb of Jesus. There are also thousands of artifacts left behind by our ancestors. These depict the actual aliens themselves and their shape-shifting nature. 
from rock paintings that are tens of thousands of years old to carvings and statues of later civilizations. There are even numerous crafts seen around the world and left for us as works of art. Strange faces, strange craft, humanoids with elongated serpent-like eyes, spacesuits, spaceships, depictions of planets with rings that could not have been known, weapons. There are huge gaps in our history that simply cannot be explained in any other way. How suddenly an agrarian society discovers the knowledge to become a world-leading civilization with the ability to build massive superstructures that point to specific locations in the sky. This is just one example. There are more, and they are all over the world. If mankind was creating some kind of lie about his origins, then he was doing so on a grand scale, and our modern historians are ignoring their ancestors' explanations that aliens came took control and took over our minds. The fact is this, ancient artifacts across the world reveal non-human intelligent creatures at the hands of machines and weapons and superior to the ordinary human beings below them. Historians know this and yet they themselves create fanciful explanations that simply do not explain this whole story. Align the texts with the artifacts and add into this the altered states humans experience and we have but one conclusion. We were invaded and we are right now to this very day being controlled by descendants of the invaders. We are under the yoke of a hybrid species of alien beings who rule the world. The whole picture is not taken into account at all. There is absolutely no explanation why cultures separated by thousands of miles and thousands of years all come up with the same cultural origins of extraterrestrial superhuman beings that all look and act the same. Beings from another reality, super weapons, superpowers, the ability to change shape, the serpentine reptilian appearance, the creation of civilization, the teaching of humanity, the erection of huge structures, the sudden knowledge of mankind, the forming of religions with deities and divine beings, and the forming of a line of special hybrid kings and queens. All of this is factual and worldwide. It is in every single culture and country, and it all supposedly happened separately. The truth is that these early historians were recording history, not creating myths. And so, as time passed, mankind continued to do the bidding of the masters. They went to the temple or church and worshipped the ancient aliens depicted in light as great benefactors of humanity. Ever wondered why the God of the Bible sometimes appears too human? Why he is a jealous God? Why he is lonely? Why he wipes out entire armies with his super weapons? The answer is simple. The gods of ancient times were all those things. They too have jealousy, hatred, love, compassion, because they too evolved in the universe like us. But they are the fittest of the species, and we are not. We are the prisoners, and they are the gods. Now you know the answer to that question of why God does the things he does, if he truly is a loving God.
As the years passed and the hybrid species ruled the lands, things changed. Civilizations grew, and one state battled another. Why, we cannot truly say, but the same families were always behind the decisions on both sides. Maybe it was some kind of sport, playing with humanity, having a laugh. Who can say? Any explanation for warfare with fellow human beings is insane. And yet, the world is a big stage, and in order to achieve the long-term goal of the secret cabal that sits behind the scenes, things must move at a certain pace. The goal is simple and straightforward. It is obvious from all the recorded history we have. It is to create a single, one world government that rules without question. History reveals that the thousands of different states and countries have taken time to form together into ever increasingly larger states and countries or groups. European unions, federations, African unions and more. It has taken the threat of more warfare and bloodshed to overcome the darker elements of our own psychologies to get to this state. The fear of more death is a strong force. But it has not always been warfare that has worked. After each and every financial crash, humans have come together and insisted on stronger bonds and more union. All of this centralises the power even more into one place. The results of just two methods of control are the formation of a one world army under the United Nations to carry out the will of the secretive elite and a world bank to control the finances of the same. Such power is wielded here that nobody dare rise against it. And all along, the same families are behind the entire scheme. The same families that sit on thrones in glorious palaces and are still worshipped as gods and are still given authority by the created religions. These are the same families that the fleeting politicians who only have a set amount of time in office court. The Queen of England and the Commonwealth is just one example. Her bloodline can be traced back thousands of years to the very original times of the Watchers and Shiny Ones. Her bloodline is special because it is a hybrid bloodline, carefully monitored and interbred with members of the same hybrid descendants to this day. Every week, the elected Prime Minister of the nation must go and hold a secret meeting with the monarch to pass on information, take advice and discuss the work of the Secret Service. Nothing can happen without royal assent. She is the richest person on the planet with more accumulated wealth than even Apple. Her power stretches around the world and is linked by blood to the majority of royals in Europe and elsewhere. The government of the United Kingdom, Australia, Canada and others are her governments. She has authority to rule as the divine leader because God says so through her church which she heads. All of this is very simple to prove and reveal. What is not so simple, but nevertheless true, is that the hidden governments of so-called republics are themselves led by the same elite bloodlines. Presidents come and go as heads of state, being elected and deselected. Royalty passes on authority to their own offspring. However, presidents and leaders of republics only ever get elected when they have been chosen by the secret cabal. They are bribed and blackmailed to do as they are told. 
Anybody steps out of line and they are removed one way or another. The real governments are the civil servants who work behind the scenes advising so-called elected members. These are permanent members of the government and these are almost always following in their parents' footsteps. They go to the same universities where they are monitored, manipulated and controlled. They become part of the elite. They join secret societies where they are made to feel special, chosen, powerful. And they do their master's bidding. This is how the hybrid men behind the scenes control the world. And it is not just in government. The same bloodlines are also found in religions and in commerce. Take a look at the secret meetings such as the Bilderberg meeting. Powerful individuals coming together from across the world to decide on the future of the world. They come from government, commerce, religion, science and royalty. Who chooses? Who decides on what is to be discussed? Why, each year, are there people that actually become world leaders years later? Because it is all part of the massively powerful secret cabal that runs the world. You may not believe they can hold such power, that you elect your government, but the facts are simple. All of the media which influences your decisions is owned by the same people. The same people own both sides of the political world, whether red or blue. They select their future leaders while still at university. They grow them, manipulate them. They then decide what they need to happen and who needs to be in power at any one time and manipulate the media to convince us. Ever watch the news and scream at it because you know that they are not telling you the whole truth? Why are we being so calm about immigration, you may shout? Why are we not invading the Middle East and stopping all the nonsense? Why do we let China get away with massive human rights crimes? The list is endless, but the answer is the same. The news channels are controlled by the elite. We are watching nothing but permanent propaganda. It permeates everything. News, soap operas, films, magazines, music and the internet. All is controlled. In ancient Egypt, the pharaohs created grand works to keep the massive populations controlled and busy. They knew that a bored mind wanders and they simply did not want their people to wander and wonder too much. The same is true today. In the times before ordinary humans could read, the Christians placed stained glass windows and murals in their churches to show the people what they needed to believe in. Using repetitive chants and songs, they rammed the message home. The same is true today. Pretty films and games entertain us, but also subtly manipulate our minds into believing what they want us to believe. We all know this to be true. Look back at the films created during and after the Second World War, and it is now blatantly obvious that these were propaganda films. In the 1950s and 60s, more German-friendly films were made to slowly adjust us back again. They even gave Elvis a few German lines to sing in order to soften us back up again against the hatred they had previously inspired. All along, you and I are blinded by the marketing and propaganda. It used to be that we were told what to believe or we'd be hung and then go to hell. Now they threaten us with financial crises or terrorism that they create, foster and build. The Middle East is a perfect example because it is a playground to be used by the secret cabal to control world events. It 
has been for a very long time. The infamous hero, Lawrence of Arabia, was murdered by the Secret Service because he knew and was going to reveal it to the world. As things stand, the Secret Services of the West have been undermining the power structure of the Middle East for some time. They claim the moral high ground because they claim to have a thing called democracy. And yet, the leaders they have been toppling are the leaders they previously put into power. What they have been doing is dividing nations, creating threatening factions that war against each other and us. This works beautifully on many levels. It sells more arms. It creates a scared public who look at terrorists as a threat and not their own government. That's an ancient tactic. It weakens all the countries involved, allowing the glorious West to come in and save the day, set up their own puppet governments and insist that yet more union is required. The Middle East has been one of those sticking points in the grand scheme. It has refused to unite because of religious and cultural divisions. Europe, Africa, America, Australasia and even the East have all been coming together, forming unions and joining the World Trade Organization, UN, and other one world governing bodies. Middle East has been getting too cocky and needed smashing apart to rebuild. This has been done again and again throughout history. The First World War was a prime example of how a continent was ripped apart and then glued back together again in a different form. What disappeared were the royals who refused to toe the line and several countries reformed. A League of Nations emerged as a precursor of the United Nations and part of the One World War Revolution was complete. They did the same thing again a few years later and smashed apart several other empires that needed to be brought into line. Any nation that gets too strange, or appears to do so, is smashed, one way or another. Strength and prosperity is therefore seen only by joining with the One. The Middle Eastern crisis, as it stands, is part of the process of bringing them into line. The collateral damage of millions of lives is not an issue the Cabal have ever concerned themselves with. Loving gods indeed. But despair not, for there is actually more to the story. Although we cannot see the entities we are describing without altering our vision, they are there, and there are opposing forces at work. We see everything around us because of a very small part of the wave spectrum. We call it light, but there are many kinds of light, and we only see a slither. Outside of that minor part of the spectrum, there are other things we cannot see. Over thousands of years, there have been millions of people that have seen beyond our normal spectrum, and they have witnessed these other beings. One large group who did so were the ancient shaman. Through the use of drugs and mind-altering techniques, they witnessed the beings all around them, and they left records for us. To simplify, what they told us was that there were good beings and bad beings, and one side waged against the other. Today, there are many mediums who claim the same thing. However, our ancestors told us precisely what had happened. The Shining Ones came down, they set up the watches to control humans and foster civilization. But some of these watches didn't like what they were doing, and actually fell in love with humans and mated with them. The Shining Ones declared war on these watches and tried to wipe them out. The bad hybrid species. They caused a global flood.
Ever since then, the angels have done battle with the demons, the bad with the good. And we have often witnessed these things, painted them, drawn them, and written down records. These are records left behind by people such as Enoch, and remarkably the same things spoken of thousands of years ago are still being witnessed today. Benevolent beings saving humans from disaster, battles in the sky, a war between those that would control us and those that would set us free. The reason we don't see all these things and find crashed craft or dead bodies everywhere is simple. Your mobile phone signal is yours. The person next to you can also talk on their phone at the same time. The conversations do not cross or get mixed up. One does not hear the other, and yet they coexist. The same is true here. What mystics are seeing are beings of different light in a different dimension. What people who are in the hypnagogic state or between waking and sleeping are seeing is another world, existing in the same place in space and time as our own. One is attempting to control the other and very often steps across the boundary. Beings from that other place actually crossed over to our dimension thousands of years ago and took control. They have been manipulating us ever since through their hybrid children. The jealousy of the God was that he wanted control and would never relinquish it. But there are angels of light that fight back and the whole myth has become so mixed up now that it is confusing. The Freemasons are accused of worshipping the devil because they actually hold Lucifer in high esteem. Lucifer means light, not darkness. Things, as Salvador Dali once said, are not always what they seem. But the big question is this, why? What do these beings need so much that they need to control us, to cause division, hatred? The answer comes in another question. What feeds wave? There can be no life without a wave form. It is life. When a wave stops, so does life. But it must be fed. It must have energy. To get a light bulb to glow, to emit its light wave form, it must be energised, has to be fed. Over billions of years, life on planet Earth evolved out of chaos. There were volcanoes, earthquakes, storms, and eventually it all settled down after having created the optimum place for life to exist. Millions of years later, here we are, but alongside of us, that something else evolved. Something we cannot see with our ordinary eyes. As beings of light and part of a spectrum we cannot see, we did not have the capacity to eat physical food, to feed its own light bulb from plants and animals. Instead, it evolved needing energy. We feed these entities with our hatred, greed and desires.
Without war, they starve. In peace, they perish. This is why the old ag of our dreams paralyzes us, because she is sapping our energy of fear. This is why alien abductees cannot move, because they are having the life force of the wave extracted. This is why we humans are constantly manipulated to battle and hate each other. We are creating food for the demons of the other world, and we must stop. We must stop now playing the game they want us to play, and seek peace with each other regardless of the reasons. The reasons for our hatred are those created by the elite secret cabal in order to create hatred. Hatred of one religion or another is a prime example. There are no religions. They are created. They are imaginary. The differences between humans and their religions is a farce. And yet it has been used to foster huge hatred energy. Often conspiracy theorists want to fight the system, to break the power of the elite. But the answer to the problem is more subtle than simply feeding back into the system of hatred. The answer is not being part of the system. The system is very simple and yet hard to see. It involves every element of our lives. What we eat is controlled. We are told what to eat when and where to eat it. The food itself is often garbage. We are guinea pigs on a massive meat-eating locust machine. We buy a hot dog because we've seen the stars eat them in the movies. And it's somehow cool. That hot dog is made up of the leftovers of several different animals swept up off the floor, turned into a watery pulp and ejected into a plastic bag. It's carcinogenic. It causes cancer. It has been proven to increase cancer. We pour chemicals all over it that taste nice and wash it down with a chemical cancer inducing soda. It is not natural. And that is the answer here. If it is not natural, then it is not good. If man has had his hand in it, then watch out. It's part of the system. This same premise can be rolled out to the rest of our lives with drugs, clothing, housing, finance, everything. Almost everything is part of the system, feeding the system. Stepping out of the system and peacefully going back into nature takes us back to a time when our history reveals we were a peaceful species before they came and revealed themselves to us. Before war began. Before we started eating meat. Before we became jealous of others and hatred set in. Before we were controlled and were one with the nature around us. Salvador Dali was a unique artist. He saw reality in a different way to the rest of us and mocked the system. He bent reality and to us it appears strange but to him it was reality. My reality is different to yours. Even further away is the reality of my dog to my own and even further still is the reality of an ant or a bee or a fish and yet we all coexist. What is it, then, that causes me to hate members of my own species? It is not reality I should wish for, and it is created within us by the elite cabal. Let's step out of their system and do the right thing and stop believing the reality that is heaped upon us by men and women that wish to feed darkness. 
Let's open our minds to a different reality to the one we see on the TV screen. To the one where lion can lay down with a lamb. To one of pure balance.